In this lesson, we are going to learn how to solve a linear system using elimination. So in the previous lesson, just before this, I showed you that if they give you two equations, for example, y equals to 2x minus 4 and y equals to minus 3x plus 1, then there is a way for you to be able to then draw those two lines and to then find out where they intercept by just looking at on the graph or like you, so you literally just draw them and then you see where they intercept. That is called the graphing method. Now, in this lesson, I'm gonna show you a different way of finding the same answer, but we're just using a different technique. So we are, we are actually finding out the place where the two lines cross over, but in this lesson, I'm gonna show you how to do it without having to draw the equations. So we're just gonna use mathematics now. Okay, and this is the elimination method. So step one, okay, so let's make some steps. Step one, what I want you to do is get x and y on the left, okay? And get the x first. So x first, y second. So what do I mean? Let me show you. So I want you to take these two over to the left Okay, but put the put the x first. So minus 3x, then plus, sorry, minus 2y. That would become a minus 2y. And then on the right-hand side, you can keep the number there, which is the 8. Then you're going to do the same with the bottom equation. So you're going to take the 3x over like that. And then you're going to look for, or you're going to put the 4y over. And then you're going to take this 10, and you're going to put it on the other side. So that's actually going to become negative 10. There we go. So that's step one. Step two what I want you to do is um, R, I want you to look for the following. Are any, are, sorry, are the X numbers or Y numbers the same? Okay, so for example, we can see that the Y numbers are different. The ones are four, the ones are minus two. But look at the X numbers. They are almost identical, right? So the one is a minus three and the one is a three. So we are gonna use the X's. And so what we're gonna do now is you are either gonna plus these two equations together or you are gonna subtract them. So Kevin, which one should we do? Well, what you are gonna do is you would like these X's to cancel each other out. So how would you do that? Well, if you are to plus these two equations together, okay, so you're going to plus them together, then minus 3 plus 3 would give you 0, which is amazing. That's what we want. Then minus 2 plus 4 is going to give you 2 y's. And then 8 plus minus 10 would give you minus 2. There we go. That's how you do it, okay? Sometimes we're going to minus them. Sometimes we're going to plus them. But the goal is to make sure that you can cancel these out. Sometimes you're going to cancel the X's out. Sometimes you're going to cancel out the Y's. Okay? And I'm hoping that in this lesson we do have examples that are going to show you both scenarios. Now what you can do is you can literally just go and solve this equation. And what you would find is that Y is going to be equal to minus 2 divided by 2, which is negative 1. So this is incredible because now we already have the y value. We already know what the y value is. You know when the two lines cross over, there's always a x and a y, right? There's always a x and a y. So what we've just found is we've just found the y. So to find the x, it's very easy. All that you do is you are going to take this y value and you are going to put it back into one of these equations. You can decide for yourself which one you would like to use. It's going to give you the same answer at the end, so you can decide. So I'm just gonna take this y equals to minus one, and I'm gonna put it into the y of the first equation. So then you're gonna end up with zero is equal to two multiplied by negative one plus three x plus eight. So we end up with zero is equal to negative two plus three x plus eight. And so we end up with zero is equal to three x plus six, because negative two plus eight is six. Now you're just gonna take the six over to the other side, or you could have taken the x, it doesn't really matter. But what you're trying to do now is you're trying to solve for x. And so if we then had to divide both sides by three, we would end up with x is equal to negative 
2. And so our final answer is when g is, is x is negative 2 and y is negative 1. Here's our next one. Ah, this one's good. This one's going to be using the y's. So that's quite cool. And the next example, uh, the one after this, is going to be really cool because I'm going to show you a... Sometimes, sometimes these numbers aren't exactly the same, and sometimes these also aren't the same. So sometimes we're going to have to use, I'm saying sometimes a lot, goodness me. Okay, so sometimes we are going to have to use like a common uh, multiple, but I'm going to show you that in this next example. Okay, but in this example, uh, step one, just get the x's, on the x's and the y's on the left, and then get all the other numbers on the right. So we're going to end up with negative uh, 5x plus 3y equals to negative 2. So you see what I did? I took this 5x over to the left hand side so it became negative. This 3y stays there and then I took this 2 over to the right so it's now negative. Okay and then I'm going to do the same with this equation so we're going to end up with negative 15x plus 3y equals to 18. There we go so that's step one. Step two are there any numbers for the x's or for the y's that are the same? Oh yes, it's staring us right in the face. There we go. Now, the big question is, should we add them or should we subtract them? Well, if you add them, that's not going to work. Because this plus this is going to be 6y. But we want them to cancel out. But then, Kevin, why did we add them in the first example? So, in the first example, the 1 was a negative and the 1 was a positive. So, adding them made sense. But in this example, they're both positive, so adding them is not going to work. So what we'll do is we will subtract them. Okay, now here's, you've got to be so careful when subtracting. For example, if we take the top equation, let's say that's number one and let's say that's number two. So if we say number one minus number two, then you're going to end up with um, minus 5x. Let me write this out here. Minus 5x, then you are subtracting. And then this is negative 15x, so you're going to say negative 15x. So you're actually ending up, you get, this is actually going to become a plus. And this is where a lot of learners make mistakes. It's going to become minus 5x plus 15x. So you're going to end up with uh, 10x over here. Then you're saying this one, take away this one, which is 0, which is amazing. You always want the x's or you want the y's to become a 0. And then here you're going to say minus 2, take away 18. And so that's going to be negative 20. And so what we do now is we end up with the following. And then we divide both sides by 10, divide by 10. And so we end up with x equals to negative 2. Now that we know that x is negative 2, we now need to go find y. Can you remember how we do that? Well, this step's easy. You can either choose this equation at the top or this equation over here. And you're literally just going to take that x value and plug it in. I'm going to choose the first one, so I'm going to let x equal to negative 2 in the first equation. And so you're going to end up with 3y plus 2 equals to 5 multiplied by negative 2. And so you end up with 3y plus 2 equals to negative 10. And so 3y is going to end up being negative 10 take away 2. So 3y is going to be negative 12. And then you're going to divide both sides by 3. And so you end up with y equals to negative Four. So the final answer would be negative 2 and negative 4. So you always put the x value first and then the y value. And there we have it. So now we're going to do one more example. Now this example is really cool. So step one, get the x and the y on the left. So here we have x and y on the left already, but I like to put the x first. So I just do that. Then this positive 6, we're going to take it over to the other side like that. And then this 3x and this 9y, we're going to take over to the left-hand side. So the 3x would become ne positive. Uh, the 9y would now become uh, negative. And then this negative 9, we're going to take over. So it will now become positive 9. There we go. Now, can you see that these are not the same? Uh-oh. And these are also not the same. So what are we going to do now? Well, it's pretty easy. You need to make a choice. Do you want to make the x's the same or do you want to make the y's the same? You're going to get the same answer at the end, so it doesn't matter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and make these x's the same. So if this one's a 2 and this one's a 3, what is the lowest common multiple of 2 and 3? 
Well, that would be a six, right? We could make both of these become six. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply this entire equation by three, okay? And then I'm gonna multiply this entire equation by two, like that. And so if I rewrite these equations now, it's gonna become, so I'm rewriting this one first. It's gonna be negative six x, take away nine y, and that's equal to negative 18. Then I'm gonna rewrite this equation, so that's gonna become six x, take away 18 y, because I'm multiplying it by two, and that's equal to 18. There we go, so now we're starting to see numbers that are the same. That's all that we have to do. So now you need to decide, okay, so these two are the same. I know the ones are negative and the ones are positive, but you now need to decide whether we should add them or whether we should subtract them. Well, in this scenario, you're gonna add them because minus six x plus six x does give us zero. So that's good. That will eliminate, by the way, that's why we call it elimination. It will eliminate all the x's. So we're gonna say the top equation plus the bottom equations, that's gonna give us zero over here. Then minus nine plus minus 18 is gonna give us minus 27 y. And then minus 18 plus 18, ah, oh, that's actually gonna give us a zero. Okay, so we end up with negative 27 y equals to zero, and then we end up with y equals to zero divided by negative 27, and so y equals to zero. There we go. So now we know that y is zero, and now what you do is you take that and you plug it back. Now you can plug it back into this one, this one, this one, or this one, it doesn't matter. You are gonna get the same answer. So I'm just gonna be super boring and I'm always just gonna choose the top one over here. So I'm gonna plug this y equals to zero into this part over here. And so we end up with negative three times zero minus two x plus six equals to zero. And then we end up with negative two x plus six equals to zero. Now I'm running out of space, so I'm gonna write it over here. And so I'm gonna take the two x over to the other side, then I'm gonna divide everything by two, so we end up with x equals to three. So the final answer would be x is three and y is zero.